This is the lockpicking lawyer, and I get emails with some regularity from pickers who have either disabled or destroyed a lock. And since I've already made pretty much every mistake there is to make, I usually know pretty quickly whether it's an easy fix or if it's time to slip a 20 to your apartment maintenance person. The reality is that new pickers are going to make mistakes, and that's why it's generally a very bad idea for beginners to pick locks in use. But some locks can be troublesome even if you do everything right. One example is this door lock from a 2010 Subaru Impreza. If you pick it, the cord becomes lodged between the locked and unlocked position, and while you can remove the pick, you will not be able to insert a key until you pick it closed. Now, because you will be picking in the same direction as the spring tension, it's considerably harder to get it unlocked if you don't know what you're doing. Let me show you what I mean. We're first going to place this lock in a vise. That'll make it a little bit easier for you to see what I'm doing. And to pick it, we're going to use the DAT17 Leashy Pick, which I sell over on CovertInstruments.com. Okay, now you can see the wafers numbered one through five, but if we look carefully, we can see the picking arms also have A and B. That's because there are 10 wafers, 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, and so on and so forth. I'm gonna be calling them by that names as I pick. Okay, nothing on 1B, 2A, 3B, gave me a little click. Nothing on 4A or 5B. 1A is loose, nothing on 2B, 3A, 4B, little click there, nothing on 5A, 1B, 2A, 3B, 4A, 5B, click there, 1A, nice click out of 2B, nothing on 3A, 4B, 5A is binding, little click there. 1B, 2A is binding again, little click there. 3B is binding. Click there, and I heard at least a couple of pins drop. 4A, little click out of that. Nothing on 5B. 1A, 2B, 3A. 4B, I'm not sure about, so I'm gonna leave it alone. 5A, little click there. 1B, 2A is binding again. Nice click there. Nothing on 3B, 4A, 5B is binding. Little click there. I have to say, while this is not difficult to pick, it's certainly more time consuming than I was expecting. Click out of 4B, nothing on 5A. 1B, click out of 2A, nothing on 3B. 4A is binding, click there, and a fair bit of movement on the core. 5B, nice click there. 1A, 2B, 3A, 4B. 5A, not sure what's holding us up. Let's see, 1B, click there, or it's binding, I should say. We got a click, and we can see that we did get this open, but this is now lodged between the locked and unlocked position. And in fact, if we take this out, we'll be able to see you can't get a key into the lock. So, to get this workable again, we need to pick it back to the locked position. And we should only have to pick half of the wafers, and I believe they are the A wafers, but I could be wrong. Yep, 1A, 3A, 5A, 2A, and I heard something drop. 4A, heard something else drop. 2A again. Nothing on 1A, 3A, 
5A and we finally got it back to a position where it will work. Okay, folks, it's not too difficult if you know what you're doing, but there are traps out there for the unwary, so be sure to know what they are before attempting a lock on which you rely. In any case, that's all I have for you today. If you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.